that you get undressed. There he is. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> so that's how we got to just hang up and start back over again. Yeah. Right. You know. so let me position back myself in my seat okay. and then we'll be good to go. How Perfect. you been, Travis? I've been really good. You know, just trying to get used to this new normal uh, when it comes to this COVID situation and being yes. like stuck in the house. So just trying to get uh, adjusted. Yeah, put my camera, put it up a little. Yeah, there we go. All right. It's definitely something that we got to get adjusted to. I don't know what's been, you know, with everything. It's been like crazy. I'm sorry. My cameraman trying to get the camera right because I had to move it. <laughs> oh, it's all good. He got to get those angles, you know? So. He got to get those angles. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're wrong. Got to give us today, but we're good. I think that's perfect. I think right there is good. Right. I don't think I've cut off. Am I? I think we're good. Come up more. All right. Perfect. All right, guys. So <laughs> thank you guys for joining another live with Mel. We're here with former NFL veteran Travis Daniels and photographer. Oh, my God. The amazing Travis Daniels, let's say. Um, you have been so amazing. I love working with you. Your work speaks volume, quality. Oh, my God. Your model alone is all you have to put on your photos all the time. Quality is key. Yeah. And I'm just telling you, it just speaks for itself. Like, my clients love you. Love you. Love you. Yeah, and I love them back. <laughs> <laughs> so, before we go dive in, I wanted to, for you to take this time to kind of give people a little intro about you and, you know, how you got into this whole industry. And we'll go dive in into different parts of the segment. Yeah, perfect. So, um, so hi guys. Um, if anybody just joined in, uh, my name is Travis Daniels, and my company is Travis Daniels Photography. Um, before I was a professional wedding photographer, I played eight years in the NFL. Uh, I played football uh, in high school. Got a Division One scholarship to LSU, where I won a national championship in uh, '03, and then uh, ended up getting drafted back to the hometown Miami Dolphins. Played three years in Miami. And then wow. got traded to Cleveland Browns and finished my last four years in Kansas City. So um, a lot of people always ask, like, man, how did you get into photography? Yeah. Well, I took a class in high school just uh -huh. as a, an elective. And it was pretty cool, you know. But when I got to college, I kind of strayed away from it because uh, the, the demands of being a student athlete was just crazy tough. So right. Moving forward, fast forward, now I'm playing uh, in Kansas City. I'm, I'm in like year seven, approaching eight. I know I, I didn't want to continue to play football for too much longer due to injuries and, and things like that. Um, one day I was in the training room getting my ankles worked on, and one of our team doctors came in to, to speak to our head trainer. So right. he had to be about 60-something years old. And uh, I was just thinking to myself, like, wow, you know, he has a great job. Uh, he he's able to make a great living and he's not killing himself to make the money. So uh, at that moment, I had a, a magazine in my hand and I'm just looking at the pictures and just something came to my mind and just said, uh, I wonder if I can create a picture that somebody would like the way I like this picture. Fast forward, I took that information to our head uh, photographer for the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, Steve Sanders, told him I was interested in photography. So he told me, I, I was like, hey, I got a camera. He was like, bring it to me. So I had like just a little small little camera, brought it to him. He was just, he was like, man, if uh, you want to do it. You're trying to froze a little bit, okay. Seeing, you know, um, about like how much it costs, things like that. And it was like freaking me out. Like I couldn't believe like a camera could cost like seven grand, you know, just oh, for five. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so basically I just went from that point and I just like never stopped. So, um, after my eighth year, um, I was the first football player to ever be credentialed to, like, photograph the Pro Bowl. So that was, like, really huge. They had, like, these camera crews oh following you around. Yeah, it was, like, crazy. They did, like, a whole story thing, you know. So it was, it was really fun. Um, and then when I came back, one of my friends, good friends named Taishiko, she used to model for Wilhelmina on, in, on the beach. So yeah. um, she took me into the office. I met the directors. And they was like, okay, we'll give you a shot. So they gave me an actual model. And uh, I was freaking out my first shoot. Like, oh, man. I didn't know what to do. You know, I'm used to, like, telling people, watch out for the crack and, you know, calling defensive plays. And now I have, like, a real model in front of me, you know. Right. Luckily, the photos came out good, and they just kept using me. 
you know, from that wow. point. So uh, I would say like my first 20 to 30 photo sessions was like free, no charge, right? Wow. Because I always think like you can't charge somebody for something you can't show, right? Exactly. So instead of like buying flyers and doing all those things, I was just like, I would invest my time, do these photos, give the people the photos, post them on Instagram and kind of get it going. And then um, a, a young lady asked me if I would shoot her wedding. And I was like nervous. Like, I was like, no way, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she was like, she was like, hey, if you could take a picture of somebody in a swimsuit and it looked like this, I'm just wearing a wedding dress. Right. So it's just like no pressure. So I was like, all right, cool. And right. Um, the reaction that I had got from her from that wedding let me know that this is where I'm supposed to be. Wow. So, uh, it, it, it all was born. It, it, it's, it's amazing just to hear your whole transition through life. And it's so it, it's so. It's like perfectly crafted, as Savad just said, it is. It's like you started into something that you were great at, you yeah. got inspired, and then you took that inspiration and you ran with it. And yeah. that's how, you know, when people are in like the entertainment, the graphic industry, the photography, and so forth, this is exactly how we end up getting transitioned from what we thought we wanted to do to what right. we actually are made to do. Right. And you were made to be this photographer. I'm telling right. you, it's 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 great to really sit down and look back when people tell us stories about where they came from and how they got there and to look at the transition yeah. going forward yeah. and how amazing that is. Yeah. Now, how long have you been doing the wedding photography? Yeah, so uh, my first wedding I shot was probably like 2015, 16. Like the first time I ever photographed a wedding, yeah. So like going back, right? Um, since I left high school, going to Division One college, right? So I was used to being around like a first class organization. I played for Nick Saban. For the people that know like sports, they know that Saban is is tough, you know. So everything that I learned from playing football, I just transitioned it into um, to my business of photography. One, you have to be dedicated. You got to have a yes. tunnel vision. You know, you have to know how to lead people. You got to be reliable. You know, like all of the things that it took me to play good in football, I knew that if I just used those same attributes, I would definitely get there. So at first when I was taking photos and they looked like trash, like if I show you some of them right now, you'll be like, I can't believe you're the same person. But <laughs> to me, yeah, to me, what I looked at it like on day one, we would come to training camp or to like train it. We know we're gonna yes. have, we will have to have a um, conditioning test at the end of it. Yes. On day one, you can't pass that conditioning test. But as you go through it, get tired, lifting the weights, you're running, you're building yourself up. So when it's time for you to do the conditioning test, you're able to pass it. So right. I knew that ugly stages of those photos and they're not coming out right the way that I want them. I know that if I just stay patient, stay diligent, keep my focus where it need to be, at the end of the day, I'm going to get to my goal, you know, so. I'm just and that's something that, that I, I, I like because we, we say this a lot when we as event planners or event planners and we talk to photographers about quality of what we look for and the detail and the eye behind it. When you work with somebody as seasoned as yourself and so on, you know exactly what we're looking for. Like you, you definitely can go in and just capture those moments without us even coming to you and saying X, Y, Z is so important because you're so disciplined, you already have the eye for it and you've trained yourself yeah. to look for those specific details to make sure you ensure that you capture those moments for the couple. For people that are photographers, exactly, especially the ones that are now emerging, what kind of encouraging word would you give them that they need to really focus on in this industry? Yeah, just focus on yourself, right? You're going to be looking at tons of photos. You're going to see photos from, like, myself. You're going to see ring photos. You're going to see Stan Low, uh, Jules. You're going to see, like, tons of guys that are yes. doing, like, amazing work. Don't so much compare yourself to what everybody else is doing. Focus on your craft. Figure out what Damn. it is that you like and try to portray that each and every time you go out, you know? So that that's what I do. Like, I love, like, to see everybody doing great. But, you know, I don't never, like, say, oh, well, let me – do this because they are doing these different things you know it's just travis you focus on you and make sure that your client is happy at the end of the day you know as long as you do that you're always going to have an opportunity 
to photograph again because and for all of us right everybody planners, everybody no matter what when you go to a wedding you got a hundred plus people watching you right and they're like really watching you so don't ever take any seconds off don't 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 not take a photo you know of this person or that person take every photo possible connect with each and every person this way uh they always remember you when they leave every photo possible yeah. i can't tell you when started in this industry in the beginning and started working with some photographers it was like oh my time is up i'm ready to leave and i said well you know the bride still want to take one or two photos with the family and you will have those photographers who say, sure, Mel, bring them in. Let me just take that quick one or two shots before you before I go. Yes. Those things speak volume. Because right. not only would the client refer you and say, you know, my photographer, even though it was time for the go, he did stay and take that one or two shots that I really want. With my parents that he didn't really get, he made sure we got all that stuff in. So you want to make sure that you're satisfying your clients and your customers. Because right. at the end of the day, they're the one that refer us. They're the one that's going to put us out there on the map and bring more business to us. There's so many times that I've done events that I end up getting called back for baby showers. I'm getting called back to do all these different events, you know, corporate events, because somebody may come and say, hey, I saw you work. I see the way you move. I love your style. I love your energy. I, I have an event coming up. I really need to talk to you. Yeah. These things are always being looked at, people. Don't think that people are not watching you when you're right. at the event and you're moving. They're definitely looking and making sure things are going smooth because they can use you for their event. Yeah. One of like the things, and Jules is on here. Thank you, Jules. I know. We be on point with stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that I wanted to touch on, too, is during this COVID-19, because I know you and I had weddings covered up in March yeah. that we... We have big plans for a man. All right. All right. How has it been for you during this time, especially with the postponement and rescheduling? Yeah, so um, it, it's been pretty tough when it comes to, you know, uh, people having to, like, postpone their weddings, you know, because um, everybody has been spending so much time into it yourself, being a planner and the, the bride and, and the groom, planning the wedding you know people arranging flights color palettes locations like all of these things so it's been more tough for me for them as opposed to me personally you know yeah. um one thing that we definitely been doing is doing everything in our power to kind of try to help transition different dates uh things like that but for me what i've been doing is really focusing on on the business you know yeah. working on the business thinking about things that you can do better now that you have this time so Right. Going forward, I'm definitely going to be even better than I was before because I have locked in on a couple things that I probably feel like I was slacking on a little bit. This way, you know, we can uh, be stronger at the end of it. And, and, and you know, yeah, this, this, COVID, this COVID situation is – where does in, uh, football go hand in hand? It is yes. always a sudden change, right? When you're, when you're playing football, you get fumbles, you got interceptions, you know, and you can't meet as a defensive player if the quarterback throw an interception. I can't be like, man, I can't believe he just messed up. You know, I got to be like, you know what, that's made the most out of what's happening right now. So on a wedding day, it could be nice and sunny, then it starts raining. What are you going to do? Are you going to panic or you come up with a, a, a different plan, you know? So I'm just treating this just like that, you know, coming up with different ways to attack it to be better. And I agree with you 100% because this is definitely the time for us as vendors to definitely sit back and look at our brand, look at our company structure, figure out ways that we can actually innovate and grow. What can we do differently? How right. can we expand? How can we develop new techniques and new different ways that, can we, that we can use when this is all over? Right. Even during this time, I mean, doing this show as educate has given me so much, to be honest. Having you guys on here, the different knowledge, the different um, information that you guys have been given to each and every one of these newly engaged brides that are on the show. You guys don't understand how many DM messages I've been getting and so on because they're like, Mel, the show is so informative. The content is great. I Now I know exactly where to go to, who I'm looking at. And they're right. constantly looking at your pages and getting more information and reaching out. Right. So, you know, this is way for us to take the time not to just sit back and and do nothing. Right. Come up with different ways and strategies that we can simply help each other in this because we're all 
small business owners. You know what right. I'm saying? We all are in this together during this time. And if we can't find a way to really elevate and grow, we are going to be stuck right. in this situation. We yeah. got to learn how to grow and move with the flow. As you say, a lot of times as kind of we have to have a contingency plan. You have to have a plan B because right. you never know. We have the outdoor weddings that turn into rain and we got to right. move things inside. We got to, right. you know, we always have to have a backup plan. So this is the opportunity for you to come up with your backup plan. Come exactly. up with a plan that can help you out. I'm glad we're on this together. Because I'm telling you, we feeding them the knowledge today. Now, yeah. I want you to talk about your style of photography. Yeah. How did you so, get, like, what is your, 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 how do I say your top style of it? Or do you just basically like a certain style or you just do everything? Yeah. So my style is just badass photos, you know? Really, that's what we're just all about. But, you know, one thing we definitely want to do is uh, capture the moment, right? So yeah. we're going to do some really nice posing photos and things like that. But making sure we, like, capture the moment and tell the story. Like, uh, on, Instagram, you, on Instagram, you just kind of get to see, like, one photo here and there, you know, nice wild shot. But um, it's really good when I get to sit down with the clients and they get to actually look at a wedding album and see wow. how they start from beginning to the end and the crazy thing about it like some of the albums that we do have 100 images 200 images um on a wedding day you can get up to like 1200 photos in your gallery so i can actually make about like four or five different albums without using the same photos you know yeah. so um we take our time and make sure that we give you lots of variations of cropping and uh wide shot types of these different things so that uh, you know, we can we can tell that story. So I guess my style would be more of a, t a storytelling, and uh, making sure we kind of place people like in the right in the right places. You know, um, yes. not not too many times when we do photos, like things just like randomly happen. Like if we're doing like a first look with with uh, the dad, you know, yes. we, I'm gonna make sure I got that mom in the frame somewhere, right? I... She wouldn't be there unless we put her right there. But the reaction that she's gonna have. When her daughter sees her dad, it's going to be genuine, and we're going to be able to capture that, you know? So it's just capturing yes. the moment, telling beautiful stories. And that's the thing, because when I, I remember when we met, I literally said to you, and you know, we were talking, I said, I love a photographer that can tell a story. And I think almost every photographer that has, that's on my roster knows that I always look for a photographer that can actually tell a story with his photos, because that's what I look for, two people. It's not just the, the point and shoot. I need to see the moment. And we've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks, that we need to see the moment. We need to capture those emotions, those special moments right. that speak volume. Because when you go back and look back at your photos, those are the moments you can look back and say, oh, my God, I remember that day. I yeah. remember that time when my dad saw me for the first time and he started to tear. You know, those are the things that we look for in a photographer and that's what you guys as newly engaged should be looking for when you go through these different profiles and and so on when you look at these different photographies you want to make sure that you're looking at the photos for the detail right it's all in the detail people oh, when yeah. you go for a photographer don't just pick somebody that's just going to give you a point and shoot if yeah, you, you look at the photos and they're not looking great walk away yeah yeah i, I always tell people you know um you know when you're planning a wedding, right, it's a really huge task, right? Because you're basically building a house from scratch and you have to put every finished detail uh, within it. Um, so when it comes to like your photographer, you want to make sure not only does the person take nice photos, but what is the personality like? Do they have an action plan? Do they action. understand timelines? You know, when I talk to my clients, the number one thing we talk about first before we talk about any price is time. We need you to be on time. Because no matter how nice I can make photos look, I can't make them if you're not ready because you're just going to be sitting there, you know? So um, we're really, like, into making sure our clients understand that. So much so, I tell them, every time you call, we're going to talk about time to the point That's you're going right. to all right, Travis, I know I got to be on time, you know? Because it's, it's, like, that important. Like, I, I love photographing weddings. Like, I can do it, like, every single day, you know? Every night I go to sleep about two, three in the morning, just studying photography, studying pictures I took, uh, situations playing in the back of my mind because I want to give my client 
the best possible service, right? Yes. Um, like I tell every client, you know, like you could went out last year to a restaurant, you didn't have such great service. You may not remember the lipstick you was wearing, the clothes, the color palette, nothing. But that wedding day, you're going to remember every detail about it, you know? Yes. So we want to make sure outside of the photos looking great that we are effective communicators. We make sure that everybody have a good time. We make sure everybody included. Uh, we're not missing shots and uh, we want to work. I want you to get every penny out of me, you know? There you go. And that's exactly how it should be because timing is very important. And Travis knows that I will call him as well and we'll say, Travis, I want to know your arrival time. What time have we started to do X, Y, Z? And he gets a full day of coordination timeline for myself. And I will ask him, he said, do we go by a shot list or not? It's important, people, for us to start on time because the photographer is able to capture all the getting ready shots, all those great moments before he gets to the ceremony, get those shots too, and then also go into cocktail and then your reception. When right. we fall off and we're not properly timed, you're then looking for the photographer to try to catch up, and that's going to throw everything off people. Right. Everything. everything. Yeah, everything. We want to make sure that we have proper timing, and that's why the importance of having a plan and a coordinator to do these things, to make sure they're coordinated and talking to your photographer and coordinate with yourself. Because right. at the end of the day, you may coordinate with the photographer on time, but he's also looking for somebody there the day of that's going right. to assist him and back him up when it comes to that time. Yeah. So you want to make sure you do that. Yeah, we need that time. We need it big time. Yes. Right. So just to piggyback on what you said, so hairstyle is hairstyle is going to be need to be on point so that makeup can start on time. Makeup needs to start on time. So photo can start on time. Photo needs yes. to be finished. Ceremony start on time. Ceremony in cocktail in. Everything is is in place. So it's very important that you're hiring like competent and skilled people that yes. really work in the industry. Not yes. just somebody that could do stuff and, oh, I like how this looks, but can you do it on the wedding day? That's where it Go matters ahead. at, you know? And uh, luckily here in South Florida, we have a lot of great, we have some great people, you know? So uh, you definitely have an opportunity to, to uh, you know, pick and choose uh, exactly who you want, but, you know, make sure that the person got your best interest uh, in mind. Exactly. Exactly. And I appreciate you for mentioning that because that's something that is very important. And it's a great investment. Yes, I agree with you, um, crib photography. It's it's something that you're investing a lot in. You you guys have to understand when you go to and I'm gonna talk about this in a minute. Talk about your packages, Travis. Like what's really included in your package? Because sometimes people always think like, Oh, I'm just getting photos and a thumb drive, but they really don't know the length between what, what goes into a package for when you when you offer these services to clients. Yeah, so in, in all of our, we, we basically have like three collections when it comes to photo. We have a classic, we have a luxe, and we have a superior. All of those collections come with actual wedding albums. We're like really big on albums. I think that every client should have a, a, a album um, that's like holding like the family legacy. This is like your family heirloom that you're going to pass down generation to generation. Now, we have some clients that say, well, what if we don't want to have an album? Then we definitely uh, can assist in that. And we have a collection, like a master file collection, where you can own the pictures and you can do whatever you want to do with them. But my number one thing is to make sure that we uh, give you an album. In our collections, we don't do nothing less than 10 hour days. Right, nice. you're gonna have some people that say they do six, eight, and ten, which is cool. But um, what I've learned over time, right, since I come from football to photography, I had to go through like the the Google and try to figure out how to do the packages. And um, what was happening is everyone that had like those eight hour or six hour coverages, uh, if that wedding don't start exactly on time, if um, getting people seated from the cocktail hour into the reception was a hassle, food being plated was a hassle. It could be speeches and your time is up. So now yes. you have the photographer coming to you saying, hey, you know, you got to pay 700, whatever, to keep us for two more hours. And uh, that happened to me a couple of times. And I, yeah. I just felt like I, I, I didn't like how that felt. I don't want to come to the bride on the wedding date and tell them that they owe more money. So right. I love photographing the wedding. So I just said, forget those six and eights. We're only doing 10, you know. Now, if a client is just like, I only need this, like, okay, but I'm going to give it to you, like, raw, because I don't want to have to come to you and say nothing. I want to be there that whole time right. and knock it out. 
And when it comes to albums, our albums are like beautiful. I'll even like show you guys like one of them. But the cool thing about the way that we do our stuff is that none of our clients have ever received the same album, even the way it looked, because we have right. some different colors, different fabrics. So basically, if you think about going to Home Depot, you're going to paint your house. When you go to the paint aisle, there's a bunch of different types of paint. And then you have a lot of different colors that come within that range. So uh, yeah. that's how our album selection uh, works and, and, and packaging. But everything is going to come with an album. That's what we want to give. In the, in the classic collection, is going to be less than the Lux. And Lux is going to be less than the Superior. But the di right. difference in, in the collections is not anything. It has nothing to do with, like, customer service, shot selection, nothing. It's just the amount of product you receive. So if we all went out to a restaurant, we're drinking wine, you're going to have one price. If you add appetizers, entrees, desserts, the prices get bigger only because you're requiring more product from the actual vendor. But as far as like customer service, nothing changes. Perfect. Now I have two questions that I'm seeing in the comment line. And as we go along, guys, definitely put chime in with your questions for Travis. One to Wanda, yes. Attire for photographers. Yes, guys, when you're coming to a formal wedding, you need to dress appropriately. Please don't come in beach attire. You, yeah. I mean, I have, I, Tawanda, I know you asked that question because I too will look and might tell you, I never had that problem with none of my photographers on my list. But yeah. I have seen it where there was one wedding I did and a photographer showed up and he was in casual attire. And I was like, where are you going? Like, literally, where are you yeah. going? So, you know, definitely, guys, this is something that you want to ask your photographer. What is your attire? What are yeah. you wearing? Yeah. So, so yeah. So, myself, me, me and my team, we dress in all black, right? So, we're going to wear mm -hmm. nice black slacks. We're going to have a nice uh, black shirt. And we also bring blazers. Being that it's super hot in Florida, we might take the blazer off eventually because, you know, it's just baking hot outside. But we're definitely going to come dressed as if we're going to a black tie event. Um, Perfect. Wedding, weddings are, you know, black tie events. Everybody's going to be dressed down. Yes. And for a photographer to, hold on one sec. For a photographer to um, come to the wedding and they just wearing like uh, sneakers and things like that, that's definitely a uh, bad taste, you know. So uh, you definitely want to have somebody reputable. So that goes a lot too. What, what type of photographer are you hiring? What yes. the, pr the price point with photography has a lot to do with a lot of different things. You know, yes. the more expensive the person is, it's, it's for a reason. I always tell people this. You can always get something cheaper, no matter what it is. It's a car, yes. it's a van. Even, let's say Mercedes. Like people, a lot of people like Mercedes. When you go to a Mercedes dealership, they have tons of different classes of those Mercedes, from the yep. AMGs all the way down to the basic ones, right? Right? It's the same car that drives from point A to point B, but the, they operate completely different. So right. when you're like That's looking true. at photographers and don't think that everybody's going to be the same price point because nope. everybody is like completely different, you know? I'll be doing that same category. I'll be like, I can tell you my Mercedes Benz, my Porsche. I can give you my, you know, my Lexus. I can give yeah. I'd be doing that with photography. I'd say, yeah. I can give you those. And I tell you who they are, and I line them up for my brand. Yeah. Like, and, and, and that's really important, too, because when, when you think about it, as, like, a, as a, you know, me being a guy, ladies, when, it, when it's Valentine's Day, if your man was to bring you a box of chocolates from the guy that's selling them on the side of the 95, you're going, I don't want that. You don't want those type <laughs> of flowers, right? You want the top of the line, everything. When it comes that's to, right. I, I see your... I see them stepping out. They got the red bottles, the Louis purses, like all of that yes. we love quality. So when it comes to like your wedding, you definitely don't want to skimp on it at that point. Like don't no. allow that to be the day. Out of all the days you can pull back, don't pull back on your wedding. On no part from, on from no part. The flowers, your planner, your food. Get the get your top three things. Whatever your top three yes. is, make sure you got those. And you'll be all right. That's right. So one person asks, do you provide ind individual prints to share with families in your package? Uh, we don't offer individual prints to share with families, but we do print everything. We print canvases. We print acrylics. We print uh, individual awesome. 
prints. Uh, we do all kinds of printing. Now, let's say um, when we're talking with the client, um, because we don't want to have a, a Cheesecake Factory um, price list. And what I mean by that is you go to Cheesecake Factory, it's a big menu. You got like a gazillion things all over it. And we don't want to confuse you. So when you're right. looking at the collections, if you ask like, hey, can we, we want to get some extra this, this, and that, then we always could work those things out. But if we were to try to think about all of the different combinations, it's just going to be too many packages. Hold on right. one second. I'm, I'm going to bring the album for you to see. One second. All right, guys, I see you guys asking the question. I'm coming with the questions. I see you. When he gets okay. back, I'll ask those other questions for you. So, I'm ready. Right so now, um, we're right. talking about... We're talk about Hi, Nene. <laughs> Hi, Nene. Hi, Nene. Wood out. Yeah, we wood, right? You see me good? Yep. All right. So now, when you open the album, kind of have, when you open the out the I case, think your camera's still blurry. my camera's blurry. Yeah. Uh, hold on a sec. Right. Yeah, let's see what's going on. If it comes back, it looks like it's getting clear. Uh, focus back. All right, that looks better. Perfect. Okay, so. Each one of our albums is going to come in like a nice case, right? Because we want to I love that. at all costs. You open it up, you're going to have really nice backsplash, right? That backsplash could be a picture of the client. It could be the, the uh, reception room. And then you have a nice album sitting. Nice. With... Yeah. So. Um... See, I love stuff like that, guys. So you, you definitely need to know what you're getting in your packages. All right, so this is like the style of book, right? So Ooh, this I this is made that. out of what's called uh, leather wrap. This could have been made out of like a wine cork, leather, maple. I mean, whatever you want, we can pretty much do it. I mean, you open it up, you can have a really nice photo. Nice. Brian and Groom, yeah. So as you can see, really big books. Uh, yes. Really nice when it comes to telling Beautiful. the story. Yes, that is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, so, so yes, yeah, so we definitely that's offer what I'm saying, guys. Yeah, those albums are great, especially for memories to go back to and look back on. You know, sometimes you you, you wonder how much photos you're getting in the album, but you definitely like you give about two hundred and more pictures, but that's a big album. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we have really awesome um, albums, you know, and uh, that's definitely something you want to, like, hold tight to. Um, for the clients okay. that just want to have, have like, the, the files, you know, that's that's pretty cool and all, but it's nothing like having the, at some point, you're going to be a grandma, right? It's not like having the grandkids over or the kids over doing uh, Thanksgiving and breaking yes. out that wedding album. One reason why I'm, like, so, like, keen on details is like just a little bit about my life so i kind of i grew up in like single parent household have like really good family though aunties uncles but my, my dad wasn't really in my life like that right uh -huh. um, and i think that i'm just this really cool guy or whatever and i get all of this swag from myself but i probably get it from him and my granddad right mm -hmm. but since i have no fun We're gonna get some really awesome GQ shots of him, so that when he becomes a father, and his kids are growing up, and his grandkids are growing up, and they think that you know they invented this personality and swag right. and things like that. They have an actual picture of where it came from. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So. And that's a good point too to have because you always want to have that go back to because I remember growing up, I used to see my mom's album, wedding album. I used to go back into it. And I'm like, Mom, you look like that back in the day. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, and you see them on the wedding day. You, like, go back and say, oh, my God. And yeah. now when I look at the picture of myself and look at my mom back then, I say, oh, my God, I look like my mom. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. Like you, yeah. you, you try to go back and look back at these things. Yeah. You just gotta see your parents back then. So Mom was I definitely cool before. On that. <laughs> now, one of the questions that I've been asking is about film. Do you include that in your packages as well? Uh, film? Or, yes. Video. Like, like video? Yes. Yeah. So we offer video too. So um, if you receive our collections. Uh, you're going to see a thing that says cinematic. Cinematic is our video feature. And uh, everybody is going to be a team of three. So that's how we travel on wedding days. A team of three is myself and two of my assistants. One of them oh. shoot. So you're going to have two photographers. We have another one. He's shooting some. We're trying to get him to all the way doing it so you can essentially have like three different people shooting, capturing different angles. Um, but yeah, when it comes to video, we offer video, uh, two videographers and an assistant. Like everything that we do is all about quality. Like when I yes. tell you, like to see the way that we move, even things, I'm, I'm gonna give like some tips to if any photographers or videographers on here. When you go into the reception and you're doing like speeches, you should definitely have a microphone stand, right? Because you don't want the person talking, walking all over the place and, you know, because it's gonna be really hard for you to video that person if he's all over the place, you know? So we right. we nothing we nothing that we do is just by chance. Like we planned it out before we even got there, you know? So um uh yeah, so it, it'll be really good. You know, we have nice lights and everything, like lighting up the person, lighting up the couple. So, Cause sometimes when we're making the videos, we use we narrate the video with the the speeches, the people that are doing the speeches voice. So if you're gonna have speeches, definitely have them write them down, you know, because right. cocktail hour start and stuff, you know, they're gonna have some drinks so they can easily kind of backslide off of what they was thinking that they was gonna say if they don't like have it written down. So that's something that we always encourage is to write down uh, the speeches and we definitely gonna keep them in one place so that we can make this video look as cinematic as possible. When it comes to, exactly. yeah, when it, yeah, when it comes to what you're gonna receive, right? Just with video in general, like your your highlight video should be anywhere between four and ten minutes long, right? Right. Sometimes you have clients that expect to get twenty minute, thirty minute, like actual video. But if you think about it in a movie aspect, when you go to a movie theater, you watch a movie for like an hour and thirty minutes, hour and twenty minutes. They took a whole year to make that video, to make that movie. So that's hundreds of hours worth of like filming. Your wedding is only going to be 10 hour day, 11 hour maybe, that's you know? So to make something that's in, entertaining to, ca to catch people's attention is going to be in that four to 10 minute uh, range. Now we do give our clients um, an option. They can have like all of the raw footage edited and sub chapters. So if you have chapter one, two, three, four. Your chapters will be groom prep, bride prep, things like that. Or if you want to just hit the one button and it play everything, you know, we can get, we'll give it to you that way. So that last video that you can sit home and watch it with all your family, it's going to be about um, an hour, two hours of, of length, you know, because the way it is. But that right. video that you're going to Twenty minutes watching the video, and I agree with you a hundred percent. Those highlight reels, and I was talking about this yesterday as well. That these are some of the things that when I get them from you guys and I watch them back, myself get emotional because it's like you're seeing the moments of when you're telling the story from the beginning, from the. You're getting ready when the guy do the exchanging of the gifts or the bride and groom of the exchange of the gifts. Those moments are in there. You hear the voice over, you hear them talking in the background. It's so amazing to just sit back and really watch that after the whole event. You look back and say, oh my God, we did yeah. a year of planning yeah. and this is what we came back to. It's awesome. Yeah. You don't want to go back and look at something and you're like, wow, I'm still not seeing it. I'm not feeling the moment. Right. You want to be able to sit there and feel every moment that you invested a year in planning right. in those 10 hours of that day back in those 10 to 20 minutes. Right. And, and that's why it's so important that brides and grooms get it right. Right? Because yes. It's not like a photo shoot where you do family picture or engagement photo. You don't like the photo. You can go do it tomorrow, next week. When it comes to your wedding, you got one shot to get it right. It's no yes. reason. I have had clients that didn't hire us and hire someone else, and uh, they didn't like the photos. 
and they came to us and we did like a photo shoot for them and they dresses everything photos come out great but when you think about your wedding you always going to have that first memory so make yes. sure you get the, the planner that you want that can definitely help you pull the vision through make sure you get the photographer that's going to tell the story the way you want video you know like don't miss on those are those are the big three your wedding planner your photographer your video your florist you know have whatever order you want to put them in you know, put them there, you know, but don't, don't, don't miss. This not, this not the time to do it. Yeah, it's not the time. There's no do-overs. No do -over. you said it. I'm telling you, when you miss a, a big moment, yeah, it's, it's gone. Done. It's done. That's it. You yeah. can't recreate that moment. It's you done. You may try, but you can never really recreate that moment. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you get it right and get it right the first time, people. Yeah. We can't stress that enough. Hire the right people to bring out your vision. Do not cut corners, people. It Don't doesn't see. make sense. It's not worth it. It is not worth yeah, it. It's we not. stress that so much. I tell my bride. Is it, it's better to have the quality of work that you have than have everybody show up. Right. You understand what I mean? And then you're cutting corners because you're trying to please everyone. I'm glad you said that, right? Now, when it comes to weddings, right? So, let's say... No, you can't, Courtney. By, by you having, um, you know, let's say a lot, so many guests, right? To the point that the, the guest is dictating how you go about hiring your vendors, right? Yeah. Now, you're going to end up spending 10000 plus just to feed people, right? They're going to enjoy that food for four minutes. Most of them not even going to eat it all. Some of them not even going to show up and 90% of them not going to give you a gift, right? So I always tell people to make sure you think about yourself. Make sure you take care of you first and then everybody else. Oh, my God, we're preaching. I'm telling you, I know when we won't get on this show, we were going to just kill it today. I am telling you, people... He just said every, listen, man, I preach this so much, you don't understand. It's so important, people, to think about you and your partner. It's not about your guests. Right. It's about you two. Because at the end of the day, we try to please all these people. And 10 times, yo, on 95% of the time, 20, 30 people might not show up at your way. I always tell people, when you go to a venue and you get a contract and you try to give them a minimum, give them about 30 less or 50 less. Because I'm telling you the truth. These people may say they come in and they RSVP and they don't show up. Hands down. Okay? Right. You're planning for all these people that don't come and they don't give you a gift. Number one. The half of them may come and they don't eat, they don't do... Listen, people. Yeah. Stop cutting these corners for people that are not seriously in your life i always say when you're doing your invitations think about the people that are always there for you your family members your friends i am sorry but i am not worried about all the other people that you claim that you wasn't out but you wasn't there i really don't care if you don't show up or not but i want to make sure that the true people that's been there for right. me and my partner is there okay right. and yeah. those are the people that when they show up your, your celebration becomes a true celebration. Yeah, and even for myself, you know, I've been married going on five years. Uh, um, four years this year will be make four years, and even at my wedding, we didn't we didn't allow everybody to bring a plus one. Even if they was married, we didn't allow everybody to bring plus one. Look at that. We didn't have to have like an actual connection relationship with the the people, right? Because if we allow everybody to bring a plus one, that's at least another $4,000. Let's say minimum is going to be $100 <laughs> per person, right? So how you say, if 23 people don't show up, that's $2,300. Done. You just lost. Yeah, imagine what, what you could have had. Uh, photographer package or the person that, photographer that you could have had, the video that you could have had, the planner you could have had, all of the decor, extra decor you could have had for 23 more hundred dollars, you know? So you want to be really wise about like those things, you know? Another thing too, I, I hope I don't offend nobody, but when it comes to picking your bridal party, you know, you want to make sure that, that you, that you pick, 
you touch the points, Travis. Yeah, when when you pick your bridal party, you want to make sure that you pick people, you know, not out of obligation, but out of actual love and, and relationship that you have with the person, right? Because um, sometimes I, I've had a wedding where we had a bride like have a nervous breakdown because everybody was acting as if the day was all about them. From things as simple as, okay, can we get four girls on this side, other girls on this side? They going back and forth like, well, I look better on this side, but it's like it's about this person that's like right in the middle, you know. So it really shouldn't exactly. matter where you at, exactly. you know. You know, and yeah. then even complaining so much about my makeup, this makeup, you know, it's like, look, this is the person, you know, like who it's all about. So, you know, be Listen, you want to be careful with everything. When I have my brides come to me and they say I have thirteen, I have all these big numbers. I'm like, listen to me. And then, you know what? We as planners become psychiatrists. I, I think that's why I don't sleep. I'm being honest. Because at the end of the day, you go back and you come back and you're like, okay, you know, you have bridesmaids that are falling out because what? They think it's all about them. Right. They don't want to hear to what the bride wants. They want to do what they want to do and all these different things. Listen, people. At the end of the day, your bridal party should be about you. Right. It's about your day, all about you, not about what they want, what they right. think should be happening. They should be there to support you and make sure that you are at peace. Yeah. If you are going through a year of planning and you have to be going back and forth with your bridesmaids and having the stress, cut it. You need right. to cut it like real quick. I'm sorry. For anybody that's on here, but I'm talking the truth. Exactly. You Keep your yeah. bridal party low. Your best of friends, your 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 close friends, the one that have your back and support you and encourage you through the time. Take right. the stress off your back. Trust me, I don't like to see my brides in tears. Yeah. You, there was two weddings that I did in New York where the brides I had to step in because one of the bridesmaids went in and told the makeup artist and the hair stylist what she wanted, came in with like a whole tiara, like she was the bride. I said, take it out. Yeah. I yeah. said, it's not your day, boo boo. Yeah. So yeah. this is what I mean. Like you have people with their different object, you know, agendas and so forth. And they're really not focused on you. And you got to make sure that these people are focusing on you people. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we can't do the whole, you know, Oh, it's about me. You need to have a great support team. I'm glad right. you pointed that out. Yeah. And, and like one thing that I told my, my, my guys in my wedding was that, you know, I want you guys to think of this day like a 20, it's a 24 hour day, right? Yes. The reason I'm even asking you guys to be in my wedding, not only because, you know, we're great friends, but I have a tremendous love for you. And I know that you guys will sacrifice 24 hours for me. So no matter what time we have to get started, what the photographer asks us to do, I need y'all to be on board. You know, we only gonna yeah. have like an hour or something with them anyways, and we'll it'll be over, you know? And, uh, you know, as long as you get that message across to everybody, you know, beforehand, uh, that definitely is gonna help you out a lot because they, they're already coming into it with expectations. Yes, exactly. We got about eight minutes on here, so I'm gonna ask you a few questions on here. Okay. And uh, <laughs> she said, here, chemistry, you need to stop it. About I need a, I need my bridesmaids to fight for me, not fight me the bride. It's true. Yeah. It's so true though. It it needs to be a support team. Now, Travis, here's one of my questions. What is your favorite part of the wedding that you like to shoot? Well, man, you know this is gonna sound like um, just saying this, but I love like every part of it, right? I, I tell love you, it. I tell you all the time. When I take a, even when I take a photo of your shoes, I wanted to you to be able to send that to the company and they put it on their website, you know. <laughs> you. So every every part of it, I look at uh, the wedding in increments, right? When I first started photography, I used to be like freaking out when I was with brides and grooms, you know, because I'm like worrying about am I doing a good job and things like that. But I really like minimize and break it all the way down. So I don't nice. think about the whole wedding. I think about what I'm doing, like, by the moment. You know, I'm shooting the shoes. Yes. I got to do a great shot. With the guy, a great shot. And I just move throughout the, the day, you know. But I just love, like, to photograph just, like, just the story, you know. Uh, to get to get the guy looking as sharp as he ever looked before. 
So when it comes to like working with us, we're going to pose you. I'm going to tell you like exactly what I want you to do because most of the clients are not models. They've never been in front of cameras like this wow. and they don't know like what to do. So I'm able to like coach them, tell them, give me that cool squint, put your hand in right, right. here and this way. And I'm doing that with the guys and the girls, you know, and uh, that makes things like so much uh, easier and make it really smooth, you know? So, yeah. um, I, yeah, I love like every part of it. I mean, like it's no part I don't like. Even I started posting pictures on my page of like a groomsman doing a speech, right? Because it's like, you know what? I didn't show like the wild photos and things like that, but let me show you each part of it. If you go right. to my page right now, you're gonna see a real sharp photo of a groom giving a speech, you know? Nice. Really nice. Like I'm, I'll be on every part of it, you know? I'm on every yes. part of it. And, I, and that's what I'm saying. When I work with you, it's like, I, I don't have to even look for you. I just know that Travis has captured it. He's like, well, I'm on it. Like, yeah. you know, I don't even have to ask. I said, no, Travis got it. I yeah. love to give my photographers the free will to do. And this is something that you guys also have to do, Bryce. You have to trust your photographer. Give him the range to really capture the moments, you know, to get you in the mood. Because when I see those photos come back, Travis, and I see some of the shots, especially the getting ready shots, yeah. I love, oh my God. It's yeah. like, you you capture everything. Yeah. And you see the bride in their dresses, the whole flow of it, them with their bridal party. It's just amazing. You definitely have to go. I'm yeah. yeah, thank there. you. And, and like, you know, like for yourself, right? All of us photographers, our number one goal, well, one of the number one goals should be to make sure that we don't put so much pressure on our planners. They already have like a huge task, like to plan that whole day, like to make sure the, the scene arrangement is right and the chairs and everything is like going. So the more that you can take off their plate, the better it's going to be for, for them, for you. It's going to give you an opportunity for them to recommend you to more people because they like the way that you work with them, work with their clients, the way that you go about it. You know, so when, when you're photographing a wedding, not only are you photographing the wedding for the bride and groom, but the planner, the person that made the cake, the drape person, like everybody is uh, <laughs> counting on you to deliver them some photos, you know, to help I'll them tell with you. the business, you know. Rick, so, you understand? Yeah. Listen to me, people. This is what I'm talking about. When if a photographer sent me back a gallery and I'm looking for those decor shots, I'm looking for those drapings, those flowers, those every detail shot, and I can't find it, man, I have nothing to look back to. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I, can't, I can't look back on the day because I've been running around all day making sure everything's smooth. When I look at the gallery, I'm supposed to see the full day, the yeah. beauty of it. When the bride walks in to do the first look, I need to see her expression yeah. on the so, first look. So that's important right there. Like, so, so look. When when if I post a, when I post a picture, I'm gonna post a picture of a, a, a heel. As soon as we got off here, I'm gonna post a picture of one heel, a shot. That shot's gonna look great. When you see a, the girls getting ready, that shot look great. You see the room shot, it look great, right? So every everything matters, you know. So photographers, video guys, everything matters. Like don't don't like relax on no part of the day. Stay like on edge. And another thing too, guys, like. You know, no matter how much success from this notoriety you get, don't change. Like, don't act like you're, like, something more than just, like, a photographer. No matter who you shooting or whatever it is, you know, make sure you stay humble. Make sure you stay grounded. When a, I appreciate that you even having me on your on this platform, like, like to speak with you and speak to your people. You know, that's, like, uh, huge for me, you know. And, uh you know, we always want to make sure that if some, when the eyes are on us, it, it's no time to feel myself. It's time to go harder. It's just like football. If I get an interception game winning pick, the next week I got to do better, right? Because the, the teams are really on you. The bride's is looking at you. The grooms are watching you. So you got to always be better than what you was last time you was out, you know? So don't take, don't, don't take it light. Exactly. So we got two minutes out here, Travis. Two minutes, that's two. it. Oh, man, I can go. I'm telling you, we need to keep on going. I'm down. We may have I'm, to end up and come back because we're doing I'm, good. And I have I'm so always much fun ready. Yeah. I'm, I'm all, I'm so ready. we might end at 30 minutes. Yeah. Because we're going to keep on going. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, yes. so we're going to continue this live show. Yeah, we get this to the question. We are getting some great pointers here because one of the things that we want to also touch on is the editing. The time, the time it takes for you to get your photos back, people, yeah. and all that, because this is some of the things that you guys need to understand as yeah. well when it comes down to that. So you know what I'm going to do, Travis? I'm going to hang up, and we're going to go right back on. Everybody right. join back on. Everybody come back on. We're about to do it right now. On. <laughs> All right. All right, we're coming back on, guys. <laughs> Just one second. Hi, Betty Kings. <laughs> we did. We having a good time tonight with this live. All right, waiting for Travis to come back on. Hi, Steph. I know because we had so much good question. Hi, Jules. Jules, I can't wait for you tomorrow. We might be doing like a double team tomorrow as well. Part two, let's go. I'm with you, Courtney. <laughs> away for Travis to come in. And we go from there. I'm telling you, I'm there. There's Travis. All right, we're going to chime back in, guys. Waiting for Travis to connect. Okay, let's hope we don't go to there he is. Perfect. Yeah. Back in action. Yeah, perfect. So this 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 we could definitely get answer a lot of their questions too. So that's gonna be great. Yes. Hold on. You guys see in the back of my wall over there. Let me get back in the frame. <laughs> okay, awesome. So yeah, so let's talk about that, Travis. Time frame when it comes to editing photos and stuff like that. Yeah. What is your turnaround time? Yeah, so uh, a full wedding gallery is going to take us about seven, between seven and 15 business days for you to get the entire wedding gallery back. Mm -hmm. Within that time frame, too, we like to give our clients what we call a Facebook gallery, right? Yeah. Um, after the wedding, you're going to have people at the reception taking photos with the bride and groom, um, you know, and posting them online, and everybody's going to be like, oh my God, we love you so much. You look so beautiful. Congratulations. So within that, photos like a whole gallery of them you heard me yeah yes, heard so you. yeah you're back all right so so within 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 about seven days after the wedding we're going to have a facebook gallery of images that could be 15 25 30 it could be any number of photos depending on how the actual wedding day went but that whole gallery of like 700 1200 whatever photos about 15 days max after the wedding um, nice. the reason we're able to turn things over so much like that is because i have like a team right you have a lot of people that just kind of work by themselves or whatever so yes. it take them a lot longer uh to get things out um but at the rate that we're like working sometimes we're shooting eight weddings in a month and uh you know we got to get them out quick or else we're going to get two backed up so i basically built the photography team like a football team so nice. in the business world, you have like CFO, CEOs, all of those different names. I don't understand what none of those people are. But what I do know <laughs> is like what the general manager does. I know what the head coach does, the office coordinator, you know. So right. in my company, like me, I am the head coach general manager. And my there assistants you that you see in second shooters, they are like my coordinators. And then right. our production team is like our strength and conditioning coaches that get everybody all sexy, abbed up, you know, making everybody look great. So right. we just kind of delegate those tasks like that to everyone. So it's like going to Chick-fil-A, right? You go to Chick-fil-A, you got somebody taking your order. You got somebody uh, dropping the fries, making the chicken. They're going to give you the package out in a timely manner. You're happy you're going to come and dine in again. So that's like the model that we try to go about to get you in and out you know you love everything that you had and then uh and then you come back now when it comes to actually making a wedding album that's a little bit more extension of time that could take nice. that could take about like 50 hours 60 hours to retouch like an album because now you got to be really fine and toning all of the colors down removing excess signs blemishes tattoos like you're doing so much to all of those photos 
Sometimes you're working with 50 photos. Sometimes you're working with 200 photos. You know, so when you think about the amount of time that it takes just to do one, one album, you know, it could get to be a couple months, like two, two months, three months, something like that, to actually do it the right way. So we don't like rushing right. um, to the album because that's something that you're going to hold down for life. When we're turning over those Facebook galleries, it's not as extensive of retouching the way that we need to do for the actual wedding album, but everything that we put out is going to be great. And I agree with you on that because we, as photographers, we talk about editing of the photos and how editing is very important. And it takes time to really take the time to look at the photo and really edit the photo. So it's good to have a team. And I'm glad you said that, that you have your team of that you have together, that you have editors, you have your second shooters, you have all that. Because guys, you can be a one man show and a bride, you do a wedding and a bride is looking for that turnaround of her photo so she can have that to show to different, you know, to different platforms that she may want to search with it or even put it in like, as you say, featured in a magazine on different yeah. platforms. Let's talk about that. Yeah. When you send photos back to a client, you got to make sure that you're sending good edit quality photos. You right. can't just send any kind of photo to somebody because guess what? That photo is not just speaking to the bride. It's also speaking to us as planners, the makeup artists, everybody that invested in that day is looking back at that photo for their craft to speak through that photo. So editing is crucial. People. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to, you want to be great on the editing side. Uh, wait, where the uh, photographer is really going to hit a home run is when they're good out of camera, right? So yes. we call that like in-camera artistry, right? So <laughs> on the wedding day, when I take that photo of that bride or groom <clears throat> or even at an engagement shoot, when I show you the back of the camera, they're like, oh my God, like, wow, like, I, I love it. And the reason you want to be able to knock them off their feet right then is because you want to build that confidence within them. If they're not like already a model and things like that, they don't. They might not understand how much better you can make that photo look. So you have to have those color tones, everything like, right, boom, right out of the right out of the camera, you know. So that's one thing like we really focus on is making sure when I snap it, you love it, and this way you're gonna be able to give me those Rihanna eyes or those Sasha Fierce looks or anything that we ask for, cause you're like, oh man, I'm working the camera right now, you know. So now when you show me them shots where you be taking it on the job and the weddings, and you're like, man, look. I'm <laughs> like, I be like falling back, stepping back three times, waiting. I was like, I'm already at the edge of my seat at the yeah. edge of the wedding, waiting for the photos to come to my, my yeah. inbox. Like, yeah. I'm literally yeah. waiting yeah. for those photos to come over because you already see the magic before they even get edited. you like, oh my God. Did you just capture that moment? We just did an engagement shoot with Daphne on here at the theater. And yep. you showed me the picture. And I'm like, OK, hold up. <laughs> like, I'm like, Let, I'm ready. Let, I'm ready to see this. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. It, it's very important, guys, that you're able to capture those moments yeah. and be able to show that, to give confidence to the client, to know that once they get their photos back, they know they're going to expect that wow factor. It's all about the wow factor. And then you're looking at your photos and you're like, okay, I want my photos to be featured. I want my photo to go viral. But guess what? If you don't invest into the photographer to do those type of things, you can't look for those type of things, people. It's all about what you invest in. Travis, talk about it. Because I I get them when they come back to me and like, Mel, uh, I want my photos. Are you going to get featured? Are you going to put it in such and such? And if you don't, come back with photos that are not at quality, it's nothing I can do. Yes, it's, it's nothing that, nothing that should be. You know, so having a really nice dress or um, role and uh, the room that you decide to get ready in, like all of those things matter, you know? So, um when i'm photographing yes. we're not necessarily looking for the feature but if it happens great right because the number
That's right. That's right. Talk about. That. the features and things like that but uh as long as i'm top of your list i'll be good okay mimi said the sound went out are we hearing you I i'm hearing you are you yep. guys hearing him yeah can you guys hear me if, if not we can't hear travis we lost sound oh man why we lost come sound? Out, travis and come back here all right, I don't know what's going back. On. all right every time the two get undressed I hear say 